Welcome back everyone. This video is going to be about metal bonding adhesive, but more on the technical side of it. And if you watched my channel before, you've probably seen me do some sectioning on metal panels. We're using metal bond adhesive. I've always used Lord Fuser brand metal bonding adhesive. Used it for probably close to 30 years now. And I don't think I've ever used another brand. I've had real good luck with it. So I got to be thinking, everybody knows the basics on metal bonding adhesive. Grind your metal, apply the correct amount of the adhesive, clamp it tight, let it cure up, and you're good to go. So I thought, you know, there's got to be more to it. There's probably a lot of information out there that people don't really know. Well, I decided to call Fuser. So I talked with a guy named Mike, very knowledgeable, answered all kinds of questions, told me all kinds of stuff about the product that I didn't know. So this is all based on my conversation with that person. All this information is straight, straight from Fuser. And I'm not sponsored by Fuser. Everything here I had to buy myself. So let's get started. I got a list, I think about 10 things that I want to cover. But one of the first things I want to show, if you've seen the videos I've done, section this rocker panel, there's three welded sections in here. And then the last one, I just use a metal bonding adhesive. And one thing that really stands out to me, you can look backside of this, and you can see here's a butt weld with a backer. There was an overlap weld here. Here was a butt weld, and this was using the metal bonding adhesive. And if you don't have access to the backside of this panel, if you can't get in there with epoxy or a spray wax undercoating, it's a lot of area that's gonna rust. Well, there's gonna be no corrosion back in here. The first thing you do is put a light layer of adhesive on all your panels, and then you put your heavy bead on there, you clamp it together. All the bare metal is covered up. And you can see this stuff here, it's a matter of time before that's gonna rust. So one thing before I get started, this rocker panel, I think I've got my money's worth out of this. It's had the three welding sections done and the metal bonding adhesive section. So I think I'm gonna destroy this. I gotta come up with some way to destroy this panel. And I wanna see which joint is gonna be the strongest. Maybe one's gonna be way stronger than another one. Leave me a comment down below on which seam you think is going to hold up the best. Uh, like I said, I got four of them to choose from here. And it was the butt weld with the backer, the overlap, just a straight butt weld, and then the metal bonding adhesive. You know, I'm not really sure which one's gonna hold up the best, but it'd be interesting to find out. So like I said, leave me some comments. Give me your best guess. Tell me why you think it's going to hold up better, uh, and that'll be in a future video. Okay, one of the first things I was told by Fuser is more manufacturers recommend their product over anybody else's. One thing that is interesting, what I was told, uh, other and he didn't go into any name brands, anybody else's brand or anything, but he said there's some brands out there that their metal bonding adhesive isn't recommended by the OEMs, but they claim it is, and what they do, they may have a rubber repair product that's recommended by OEM. So they kind of use that as a blanket policy and they just put that over all their products. So if you're working in a collision shop, you're working on newer vehicles, you and the shop are liable for those repairs. So just do your homework, make sure the product you're using is recommended by the manufacturer. Okay, my very first question to Fuser was, why doesn't this new cartridge fit into my old gun? I've had this gun for years, and I bought this a while back, and it does not fit in here, and I didn't realize that at the time, so what I had to do to get by, I ground the top of this out because the cartridge is a little bit different. It's offset from the old ones. The old one used to be a long, long cartridge here, and it was still, this was too wide to go in there, so I put a split in it here and just pried it apart, and it worked. But now they've got this kind here. And what I was told, and another, you know, everybody's heard this due to COVID. Everybody's tired of hearing due to COVID. But what happened, they couldn't get that cartridge from the supplier anymore. So they had to go with this. And this is the same as, I believe, 3M, uh, SEM, uh, Smart Brand. So now they're all pretty much universal, and one gun will fit all these cartridges. The next thing I wanted to find out was, what is this made out of? How does it get its adhesion? And when the excess is squeezed out of your panels, it's always real tacky and gummy. What causes that? And does that end up being gummy inside the panels too? 
So what I was told, this is an acrylic product and it dries from the inside out. So once it's compressed in there, it's actually drying where it's sealed from the atmosphere, from the air, and the excess it squeezes out. When the air hits it, it doesn't cure as quick. That's why it's really gummy. And he said, it really doesn't cause any issues. You scrape it off, sand it off, and that's fine. Uh, and I asked him, I said, you know, I've worked with guys and they say they like using a different brand of metal bonding adhesive because you don't have to remove that e-coat. You can just put it right over it. That was something that didn't really make sense to me, why you'd want to put it over the e-coat. But what he told me, those products are using an epoxy base and they can be brittle and in a collision they could crack and you may lose your adhesion. Now to be fair, I didn't talk with any other companies to get their take on it. I'm sure there's a reason why they use epoxy base. There's pros and cons of everything. All this information comes right from Fuser. And I've talked to guys, you know, years ago using a different type of adhesive and they said, we don't have to remove the e-coat, you go right over the top of it. And it kind of makes sense, it saves time, but I always thought, what happens if that e-coat separates from the metal surface? You've got no adhesion then in your glue. Okay, over the years, I've literally replaced hundreds of door skins. And probably the last 10 years, I've noticed uh, Chrysler sheet metal. I don't know what it is about their e-coat, but... Here's a, say this is a miniature door skin here. You take and you remove the e-coat on the back side like you're supposed to, and then you fold this over. The e-coat on Chrysler's, that stuff just completely delaminates. It shatters, it cracks, it doesn't bend whatsoever. It just falls right off. If you've glued on a door skin or a rocker panel or a quarter panel, and you've left all that e-coat on there, and it gets in a minor collision, where it bends and it has to be repaired, that e-coat could have let loose from the metal, which means your metal bonding adhesive isn't going to adhere to anything. And that's one of the first things I've noticed when I've done some testing on my videos and I've glued panels together with Fuser. Once I've destroyed them, and I could fold them in half and that bond didn't let loose. Next thing I want to talk about is inside this metal bonding adhesive is glass beads. What that does when you put the adhesive between your two panels, when you clamp them and squeeze them together, screw it, whatever you're gonna do, it's gonna keep that adhesive in there as a uniform thickness. You can squeeze it all you want, but those glass beads, you can't compress them. And I asked him, I said, you know, you put clamps on there and you can actually hear those glass beads breaking and you can feel it. It sounds almost like you're, you're compressing, like you got sand in there. And even though your clamps are just going to be in a little area, I said, does that hurt anything? Does it destroy those beads and it's going to squeeze the glue out? He said, actually, that has a benefit. What happens when those glass beads break, they turn into little shards, and those glass particles, they'll actually dig into the metal. The way this metal bonding adhesive works, it keeps panels mostly from sliding, shear strength keeps them from moving one against the other. With those little glass shards in there, those will dig into the metal and actually create a little bit of a mechanical bond. Now, mechanical bond is different from a chemical bond. A chemical bond is the glue itself adhering by chemicals to the metal. A mechanical bond is just that. It could be a screw, a bolt, a rivet, a pair of clamps, and in this case, it's the glass shards in there that are digging into the metal. Next thing I was told, any type of galvanizing has to be removed completely off the sheet metal before you apply your uh, adhesive. So I asked them, so how do you know when it's gone? Because some of this galvanized is so thin you really don't see it on the metal. They may claim there's galvanized in there, but it's a light coating. Use a little grinder, whatever kind you want, and you're going to try and remove that galvanized and he said, when the, if it's got a heavy galvanized, it's not going to throw a lot of sparks. But you keep going over it a few times, and if it starts throwing a little bit more sparks as you go, you know the galvanizing is gone. So I'm going to take this grinder here, and I'll go on this edge. This is an old ICAR coupon. I don't know if there's any galvanized or not, but we'll see if the sparks look any different.
Okay, this panel has galvanizing on it. When I first started with the grinder, I didn't see any sparks. Once I continued on, it started sparking and you can actually see a little bit of the outline of the galvanized. So that's what you have to check for. Okay, once the panels are prepped, my next question was, how do you clean this? What I always done is just take an air compressor, blow it off, and then clean all the edges up wherever the glue is going to be applied. Now, I was told that Fuser doesn't recommend using compressed air to clean the panels. There could be contaminants that come through your filters, come through your air hose, and put oil or water or something on there. So for that reason, they just recommend wiping it down with a solvent or alcohol, make sure you let it flash. But when you're putting a door skin on and you're grinding all the way around the edge, you've got all kinds of dust and particles that are on the skin. I'd still take the air hose, blow it off, and then just use your solvent around the edge where it's gonna be glued. Make sure it's flashed off and you're ready to go. Okay, now once you get your panels all prepped, you're cleaned up, you apply your adhesive, you put them together, and they're not really where you want them to be. You have to do a little alignment. And we've heard this for years. Everybody has heard this. Uh, make sure you just slide the panels. Don't separate them. And I asked him, I said, why is that? The glue is already there. Why can't you pick it up, put it back down if you have to adjust something or, or if you have a fit issue with it? He said, what happens, you pull those apart, that glue is gonna get kind of stringy and separate. When you put that back together, you could be trapping air pockets in there. And the same reason where the excess squeezes out, that air hits it, it's always gummy, it doesn't completely cure. You could end up with that problem inside these two panels. And if you got some air pockets in there, you may have a chance for some corrosion down the road. So if you need to adjust these, make sure you just slide them and don't separate them. Now, if for some reason you put a panel on and you've got to go back and do something else, you have to remove it. Scrape all the glue off both panels. Uh, you don't have to go back and try and clean everything off, but scrape all the excess, reapply your glue, and then put it together and you'll be good to go. Okay, and it's also really important to keep these panels clamped nice and tight all the way down. If you have to clamp it, screw it, pop rivets, whatever you're gonna do, you want that bond thickness to be uniform. And I asked him, I says, what about if you can't get a good clamp or you can't get a screw into something and if you got a little excess glue, what happens there? He says, well, that'll lead to cohesion failure, which means cohesion, which is like two panels, the adhesive on two different parts put together and the strength comes from getting that completely clamped together and a nice thin layer. The thicker that glue is, the weaker it is. So it's just important, keep everything nice and tight and this is a half of a fender. I did this, oh, probably a year and a half ago. Uh, there's a video on this. I took a Ford truck fender, split it in half, just overlapped it and glued it. The glue is like paper thin in here, had a nice uniform thickness, and it didn't separate off the metal. It was a really strong bond. The other half of this fender looks identical. So that glue, it actually separated from itself. It stuck to both surfaces of the metal. If you've got a nice tight fit with clamp screws, whatever you're gonna use, get that clamp together. You're gonna have a real strong repair there. All right, last few things I wanna cover. Once this is all glued up, you've got everything all cleaned up here, ground down. I asked him, I says, can you take solvent and clean this up? Is it gonna hurt anything? Is it gonna soak into the glue? He said, solvent is fine. Don't just soak it and let it sit there wet, but you can wipe it off. It's not going to hurt it. And I know when I did this panel here, when I glued this together, I was talking about taking another, uh, another swipe with the glue and completely filling this in. Well, Fuser does not recommend putting Bondo on top of their product anymore. They used to, but what he said happens, and it's got nothing to do with structure, it's purely cosmetic. Uh, he said, once the vehicle is refinished, sometimes that will bleed through and you'll see a little shadow where that seam is coming through the paint. And depending on the color of the vehicle and where it's at, like on a rocker panel, you're never gonna see it, but on a sail panel, on a quarter panel, it may show up. But what I've been doing for years, I completely remove all the glue out of there. And you can see, I cleaned that all up, took a wire brush, scraped everything out. You could actually even sandblast that. And I filled these seams in, never had an issue. 
That's the only reason they don't recommend putting a filler on top of the, the metal bonding adhesive just because it may leave a shadow. They're more concerned about the structure and integrity of this than they are cosmetic. And now he also told me that this fuser is tested from negative 40 to 350 degrees Fahrenheit. You know, that's a pretty, pretty broad range of temperatures there. So it does hold up if it goes through the oven to get baked. So there's no issue with that. Okay, the last question I ask them, is there a panel you can put on and use 100% glue with no welds? And his answer was, you still need to follow manufacturer's recommendations. If a roof panel, quarter panel, whatever, is put on with spot welds, even if there's glue in there, you still need to do it like the factory did. If you're going to alter any procedure the way a car is built, that's entirely on you. So follow manufacturer's recommendations. Uh, if there's anything that I left out, any questions you have, leave them in the comments. I can always get back with uh, Mike at Fuser and put it in a follow-up video. So uh, I think that's going to wrap it up for this. Probably wasn't the most exciting video. I hope it was informative. Maybe you learned something you didn't know before. So thanks for watching.